Yo, what's good? It's your boy Lester Power. Welcome to another Remnant 2 build video. Today I'm bringing y'all my Shadow Assassin build. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate all you guys that's been coming through, checking out my builds, man. I'm grateful. But let's get into it. First, we got ammo reserves first. The Plasma Cutter does need more ammo in those longer boss fights. Then we got Fortify, Long Shot. We got Regrowth at level 10. The Expertise is down because we're running the uh, Devour Loop Ring. So most of the time, you'll just be getting your skills back anyway. You won't even need the expertise trait. And then we got Spirit at level 1. We're not really using the mod. We got Endurance at level 4. We got Vigor at level 10. We got Untouchable at level 10. We got Swiftness at level 10, just so you can move around faster. We got Bart Skin at level 5. And then we got Footwork at level 10, just so you can aim faster with the Plasma Cutter. Alright man, so next we're going to go over the Prime Perk Shadow. Casting an Invader skill leaves a decoy for 3 seconds which draws enemy fire. Deal 15% additional damage to enemies not targeting the invader. So whenever you're not being targeted or whenever you basically cast the decoy, you won't be getting targeted. So you'll get that 15% extra damage. And then we're running Void Cloak with the Devour Loop Ring. So basically what this does is basically give you almost unlimited Void Cloaks. You'll have a little bit of downtime, but it's just maybe like a 10 second downtime. And in between those, you could just pop shields and basically just keep your uh, void cloak up. And next we got Hunter Shroud because this is going to help you with that burst damage for the um, plasma cutter. And it just gives you awesome damage overall. For the armor, feel free to run wherever you want. You're running a void cloak so you won't be getting hit that much and then we got the devour loop ring so you'll keep procking void cloak so it's basically like you'll have a bunch of dodges up but at the same time if you're not good at dodging this is a good way to practice you know what i'm saying practice use the void cloak and that way if you miss the void cloak will catch you and then we got the shield at heart on use grants a shield for 100 percent of max health you got uh range crit hit chance range crit hit damage and then we got range damage Next we got the Plasma Cutter plus 10 with uh, Heat Sink and Momentum. It feels like this weapon got a lot better with the update man so I suggest you guys try it out. And then you don't forget about Momentum giving you that 30% critical hit chance and 30% critical hit damage. Then we got the Atom Splitter. Uh, you can run whatever melee uh, weapon you want. I'm trying to make a crazy insane melee build right now but I just can't figure it out. I'm almost there but I just can't figure it out. And then we got the Enigma plus 10. Um, we got Xenia's Malice giving you up to 30% um, weak spot damage. And whenever the enemy doesn't have a weak spot you know you swap this out for the burden of the gambler. Then we got the Devourer Loop Ring. This is really you might as well call this the end game ring. When you pair this with the plasma cutter, the plasma cutter has the highest rate per second in the game. So this is going to give you the highest chance of getting those crits and respawning your skill faster so you can keep that void cloak up. This is definitely an end game build ring. It just can complete so many builds. And then we got the Akari Warband. This is going to activate automatically from Void Cloak, giving you 15% critical hit chance and 15% critical hit damage. Next, we got the Probability Core, increasing crit hit damage by 30%. And then we got the Anchor Power, which uh, grants you 15% increase to all damage. And when you use a Relic, you get another 15% increase. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate all you guys for coming through. I'm grateful, man. Deuces.